Hi, everyone. I'm just uh, fielding questions today. No announcements. Have you all got any closer to deciding on that first <laughs> No, I, I'm um, uh, being very frank about it that uh, the, the, the short list that we have that, that's five players long, I feel like we're going to carry that for the next week up until the draft day. And because we don't, um, I don't expect there's going to be a broad consensus in, in every corner of the organization of who to take. Um, and also, uh, there is uh, always late information um, the week of the draft, so you just have to be prepared um, for alternatives in case uh, there's something that moves the needle. So um, I don't think we're going to um, really get much closer to narrowing things until the day of the draft. How does, how does the decision-making process at, at this point kind of compare to where you were at this point in 2019 or even the past two years? Um, it's a longer list of players in 2019. I think realistically, uh, we went into that draft with three and then some dark horsey kind of stuff, but it was really three guys that I felt like had a real chance eight, eight nine days out um, or whatever we are right now. So um, it's just a, it's a little more, uh, uh, a deeper list this year. Like, uh, you've been having your position players in these drafts. Is there I mean, a problem with a pitcher? I mean, is that... Or is it the best player available as far as within your system? Well, yeah, it's, it's always um, until you get real late in the draft, it's, you, it's our impression of who the best player available is. I mean, we don't have a crystal ball, um, but at the time of the draft, using all the info that we can, um, you know, picking the, the player that we want to take from a talent standpoint, um, regardless of position. Um, and uh, we, there's no pitcher in uh, consideration for the number one pick. I, I don't. I think the whole industry sees it that way. So, um, but the 33rd pick could very well be a pitcher. I just don't know. Mike, you're you're going to make the pick, but are you looking to get a consensus among among your think tank? Um, it's rare to have every single person that has a voice in it uh, agree on who the player should be. Um, that's I, I'm gosh, I'm trying to think if I've ever. Um, seen that um, in a room that I've been in, but um, we'll um, we'll get we'll have somebody that everyone's happy with. I think I think there's enough consensus a around how good these players are that um, I can't imagine there will be um, you know too many frowns about it uh, in our in our scouting department or in our analytics department or whatever when we make the pick. Are you surprised? Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't get surprised about baseball. Um, I. I think I'm very happy. I'm very um, uh, encouraged by it. I'm very proud of our players, and I credit them and the major league coaches with not the results of these games, but the um, style of play and the effort level um, th that I think we're all seeing that is hard to do on a night in, night out basis at the major league level. And I think this group deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, there's half the season left. You know, We'll see what happens. I'm sure we've got rough patches in store for us. Um, but I am uh, very globally speaking in my appraisal, I think this organization is in a very healthy spot. And, and a lot of that is the players and the way that they're playing up here at the major league level right now. and then. Um, obviously having uh, an excellent uh, group of minor league prospects behind them. And then also um, just what I see with how our front office and scouting groups and player development groups are going about things. Um, I think I think that um, we're in store for a lot of good stuff here in the next few years. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that it's kind of reflected right now during this stretch of play so plainly um, for, for our fans. Um, uh, first of all, uh, it's kind of um, with this late draft, um, it slows down. I, it seems like the last past couple of years, it slows down the industry's attention on the trade deadline. Um, but um, I think that um, in this job, everything that I do or that we do has trade offs. And um, we all I can say is we do everything from a very 
global, very thoughtful perspective about what is the right thing to do for the health of the Orioles franchise. Um, and all that's being taken into consideration um, for the draft, but also you know for the the, the trade deadline coming up. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen. I, I just um, what I'm saying is we're taking a look at everything as we make these decisions, and um, you know we'll 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 um, see what happens. I think what I just said, I, we, we take everything into account. There's always trade-offs with things that you do or you don't do. Um, and um, I take the, um, the supervision of our baseball operations very seriously and very deliberately. And, um, you know, we have to ultimately do things or don't do things. And um, there's a lot that gets poured into, um, you know, the, the ultimate decisions that we make. Um, I've uh, happened to be a part of um, a lot of top five picks because of being in the Orioles rebuild and the Astros rebuild. Um, and this was also coincided with this new CBA or the 2012 CBA where they created the draft pool system. Um, and we definitely, uh, we, we've done well, but we haven't always hit the picks perfectly. But one thing that we have done is not um, – give much of an indication of what we're going to do. And um, it's the, with the way that the way that the system's set up, um, that's that's uh, beneficial. So um, I'm being as uh, plain as I can be about that. Um, but part of it is we don't know what we're going to do yet. Um, our field scouts are trickling in. We don't have the whole group here. As I said, um, it's re until you get into the draft room and just get it all together, get it up on the screen. Let's pull this video up. Um, let's run the numbers on this. It's just, it, we're not there yet. Um, so I, I don't know. We do have a um, gigantic draft pool. I believe it's the number two draft pool in Major League history. It's, it's like 18 or $19 million. Um, the the uh, number one one was the 2015 Astros draft that we were a part of where we took um, Bregman and, and Kyle Tucker. Um, so this is an enormous opportunity. It's a big financial commitment. Um, we're going to have a lot of possibilities because of the picks that we have um, and the finances and the, the, the way the system works with the overage tax. And um, I, just, I just don't know that, but we're going to um, try to extract the maximum possible value from this entire draft. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, um, d d we've definitely learned, um, and it's um, it's a process thing. Um, things that you want to make sure you you check off. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, we continue to learn from everything that that we do. Uh, I, at least, you know, I think I think so in in this line of work. And uh, yeah, it's a it it is a heck of a. Um, thing picking one one it's uh I, I don't really like doing it for a couple reasons but um it's it's very different than being even the number two pick of the draft for the player um it's a different experience for the for the player i think that gets lost sometimes um and um it's it's um it's just a big weighty decision I, I, listen, I loved uh, taking high school hitters. Um, you know, we don't we don't do it um, 
left and right uh, willy-nilly, but I think that we look back on the drafts that, that Sig and I have been big parts of here or um, with the Astros, it's a pretty good group of high school hitters. So, um, you know, um, we've got some in the mix at the top. I'm sure there'll be some in the 33 to whatever the next pick, 42 range is um, that we'll like, and um, we'll see if they get there. Um, beyond that, I mean, a couple of years ago, you know, we took um, Daryl Hernandez in the fifth round, and um, you know, it, but the, they they start becoming less signable as the the draft goes along, and um, you know, they kind of fall off, off the board just because they end up going to college with the money dwindling as the draft goes along. So um, it's usually your first couple of picks um, where it happens. Your position, your position player. Uh, situation right now is very vibrant in the organization. Do you hope to come out of this draft with a deeper bed of pitching ultimately? Maybe. Um, I think uh, draft picks are very valuable opportunities for the Baltimore Orioles um, in particular. Um, being kind of the market size that we are and, and being a scouting and player development oriented organization and you know this is a homegrown team out here basically right now, um, or the, you know, a lot of the core players are. And um, we want to do really well with each of these picks. That's my foremost concern, um, is having the value of these picks show up on the field um, one day and have the players go out and play well in the minor leagues. So whether that's a pitcher or hitter, um, I don't know. It just depends on what happens in the draft. Um, we're obviously... Um, you know, cognizant of the need to have uh, good pitchers to go with our good hitters. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think there are myriad avenues for um, bringing those uh, pitchers in. And I, it's something I've touched on before, but, um, um, you know, it's not something that we're going to lose sight of. But it, it's also not something that we're going to force the use of our draft picks on, is it, I think what I'm saying. Like you can we see Kerstad and Aberdeen? Absolutely. Well, um, you know, that's something that, that we as you know decide when the off days roll around. Um, but um, I, I, this Delmarva um, debut of his has gone probably as well as it possibly could have ha gone. And, um, you know, it's good that he's feeling healthy, obviously. And I don't think we're going to leave him there all year. Um, we, we, we take the player that we want to take um, and that we want to start our draft with and uh, that, that we feel is going to kick off uh, the maximization of the, the draft class. Um, beyond uh, detail beyond that, um, it is something that I don't feel like is in the interest of the organization for me to reveal, especially this week. Um, but um, you know, rest assured that uh, we are um, going into uh, any high pick that we have with the goal of maximizing the output of that that pick itself. Mike, does it feel like Taryn Vavra, Jordan Westberg, Gunnar Henderson, and DL Hall are in terms of pushing for opportunities? Um, you know, they're uh, playing really well in AAA. Um, that's, you know, you start pushing for opportunities when you do that. Um, you know, I think um, uh, DL is um, uh, on the roster. He's, um, you know, kind of been in pro ball longer. Um, and, um, you know, he's... Um, going through some more speed bumps in AAA than the other guys have so far, but he's also been there a lot longer. Um, but I, uh, you know, I, anybody who's um, playing as well or is as talented as the four of those guys are, um, it could happen at any moment. But with Henderson and Westbrook not being on the 40 does that impact your, your thinking on whether they can be major leaders this year? Well, I mean, it, it, it just...